It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the podcast Move the Ball, Jen Garrett. How are you doing today? Hey, thank you so much for having me on today. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started with a sports talk podcast? Yes, I mean, I've always been one of those people that love connecting with other folks and podcasting, as you know, has been kind of the big thing here over the last few years. And so I actually had a number of NFL guys who had been whispering in my ear, like, Jen, you should start this podcast. And so it wasn't my idea. Originally, I had some other people kind of talk to me about it. And I thought at first, I thought, you know, there's so many people out there podcasting. How am I going to be different? So I initially was like, eh. Oh, maybe some other time. And then and more people kept talking to me about it. So I said, you know what? Let's give it a whirl. And I love sports and uh, love kind of having an upbeat vibe to uh, to content that I put out. And so it just made sense to talk about sports and how lessons that you learn from playing competitive sports can help you to be successful. How did you come up with the name of your podcast, Move the Ball? Well, it was kind of easy because I wrote a book called Move the Ball before that. So um, in 2018, I published the second edition of my book, Move the Ball, which was all about how football specific principles, if you apply them off the field, you can be successful in anything that you do. And so that was kind of my theme was move the ball. People uh, would post, I have a pretty big following more on LinkedIn. And so people would always post content and they'd say, hey, Jen, I moved the ball today. So it just made sense to keep with that theme. And so that's how I came up with the name, or that's why I used move the ball as the name for the podcast. What was it like writing a book um, and stuff like that? Writing the book is a lot of work. If you want to put together a, a really high quality product. It's not just let me write these chapters, scribble something together and put it out there. It's really time intensive because you you want to make sure if you're putting your name on it or for me anyway, that it was something that represented a high quality. And so it was I love to write. So for me, I enjoyed the process, but it is a lot of work to sit there and write chapter after chapter and then go through the editing process. But it was a lot of fun and uh, move the ball. The book really opened a lot of doors for me. What was the process like of writing Move the Ball? Yeah, so I guess I'll share how I got into or what what motivated me to write it. So I, as I mentioned, I love to write. I always wanted to write a book. Over the years, I thought about different topics. And I was at, I'm from Chicago. So I was at a Chicago Bears uh, NFC championship game. They were playing the Packers here in Chicago. And uh, it was freezing cold, 17 degrees. So there we are. You know, you don't notice the cold when your team's winning but my team was not winning. And so uh, we noticed the goal. But anyway, so the Bears were were trying to make a fourth quarter comeback. They were still in the game and uh, it was fourth down. Lovey Smith, who was the head coach at the time, takes a timeout. And uh, it was in that moment where I thought about how we all have fourth down moments in our own life. And you need to figure out, are you going to go for it or not? Or what play are you going to run if you go for it? So the Bears ended up losing. The Packers went on to win the Super Bowl. And I had this idea to write a book. So for me, because it was writing about football, which was something that uh, that I'm very excited about, it was fun to do, but the process was really putting together your thoughts. The outlining process is very important, right? What are you going to put in the book? So getting organized. So once you do that outline, then it's about doing the hard work of writing. So once you have that manuscript written, then it's going through the editing process, uh, getting your cover design put together, the book layout, all that stuff. And then I chose to self-publish. And the reason I chose to self-publish, I had an agent, I could have gone traditional publishing route, but it's such a longer, back then it was such a longer time to market that I wanted to really get the book out sooner because a lot of the examples and stories that I shared were from the prior football season. So I wanted people to connect with them still. So that's kind of the process in a nutshell. Of course, what were some of the stories that were in the book that were inspiring? Oh, now you're making me remember. <laughs> so, I mean, so in the book, I talk about high school, college, and pro 
football examples, as well as some personal stories. So some of the, the um, stories were a couple of really, really exciting high school comeback games where you know, teams were down three, four touchdowns, ended up turning it around as an example. Um, you know, in, in the book, I talk about not only positive examples, but also examples that were not as positive in terms of certain players, not in a disparaging way, but as a let's learn from their mistakes kind of way as well. So, um, you know, Ricky Williams is one of those people that had a great career at Texas, Heisman Trophy winner. Um, at the time, the league had the, you know, their substance abuse policy. Things have changed since then. So things didn't work out for him in the NFL. So that's just one example where we talk about a story that, that, uh, that didn't, a, a guy that was great in college and then made some choices that made him not be great in the NFL and led to disciplinary action. Of course, how do you find those players to share those stories? In the book or in the podcast? First in the book and then podcast. Yeah, so I mean, I've been a student of the game of football since I was four years old. And so as I was outlining for the book, I was just recalling different stories that I had seen, or sometimes like these high school stories that I mentioned, I might have just been reading about something in a magazine that made reference to it or online. I'm like, that's a great story. I'm going to include that. So it's a combination of already having ideas from my own personal recollection of things and then just coming across other stories through my consumption of, of content myself. Um, as far as the podcast, you know, I really look at a combination of things. One, people that have great stories, just in, just life stories to share, people that have had successful careers in the NFL, but also people that might have been destined for the NFL, but things happen. Like I, I shared on my podcast last year, I had a wonderful guy, Daryl Stinson on the show. Daryl played college football at Central Michigan University. Um, he ended up getting injured. And so he ended up uh, taking pain pills and got addicted to, to pain meds. They wouldn't let him play football anymore. And so he spiraled into this, um, this depression space and he tried to take his life and he had a moment where he realized that he had a second chance. So now he's doing great things, doing a lot of motivational speaking, working with athletes as they transition. So it's not just about people that have had successful NFL careers. It's really about people that have had great stories that they can share lessons with for other people. How do you go about finding the people that you interview for inspiring stories on your podcast? Uh, some of them are people that I know that I've come across either through, I, I do a lot of work with professional athletes. So from personal business relationships, other times it's just guests that I've had on the show will recommend other people. Um, or I might just talk to other friends and be like, Hey, you know, I've got some open slots. You know, who do you think would be good to interview on the show? And sometimes, like I said, I might just be consuming content or something happens and you learn about somebody. So I have mostly professional athletes on the show, but I also have successful entrepreneurs and Fortune 500 uh, senior executives. So one guy that I had on my show actually was a, an undercover boss. So he was on that TV show, Undercover Boss. And how I found him was I was at my mom's house she was watching this undercover boss marathon and I was working and I started listening while I was working and I liked his story. So I reached out to him on LinkedIn and I said, Hey, this is what I do. Would you be willing to come on the show? And so he did. And we had a great conversation. So sometimes you just don't, you know, you're just something happens. You see someone you're like, Hey, that would be a great guest. Of course. What are some of your future plans with your podcasts? Yeah, so I'm wrapping up season two now. Season two ends at the end of October and then season three will kick off the day after the Super Bowl. So my plan is to have more um, current players on the show at the beginning of the year, really looking for some of the high draft guys from last draft. Um, if they do well this season, I want them to come talk about their success on the show and then give advice to other guys that are coming into the league as to how they can also achieve that success. Of course, what are some of your favorite memories and moments, of course, with moving the ball? With the podcast or the whole movement? As the I whole movement. Yeah. So, you know, the thing about life is you just never know where the journey will take you. So move the ball started off as just a book. 
And it was all about football. And then it grew into this podcast. I do a lot of speaking. I work with a lot of executives and athletes. So it's really become this, this movement of forward motion. And some of the things that have been memorable for me was from the podcast standpoint, I recently had Coach Mike Ditka on the show, recently had Bill Cartwright, who was five-time NBA champ, former Bulls head coach. So being from Chicago, that was someone that I certainly resonated with growing up watching him play. So from the podcast, being able to interact with guys like that was pretty cool for me. Um, you know, I would just say as far as the movement itself, the reason I, I really focused on this growing this movement was about making an impact for other people. I used to work in the corporate setting and Fortune 50 companies left all that behind to grow this brand and to touch as many people as possible. So for me, the stories that people will write to me and talk about how them consuming the content or just being a part of the journey has impacted their lives. That's what's most memorable for me. Cause you just never know. You never know who's consuming your podcast. You never know who's looking at your content and the impact you're making on them. What is it like to obviously hear stories from not just football players, but you said you interviewed an NBA champ and stuff mm -hmm. like that. What's that like hearing obviously different sports? Yeah, I mean, everybody's got a great story, whether you're an athlete or not, right? And that story can impact somebody else. So, I mean, hearing, uh, there's a, a lot of common themes between the athletes that I have on the show, you know, what it's all about hard work, dedication, consistency, never giving up, right? Like those themes all ring true, no matter what domain you're in, whether you're playing basketball or football or just in life. Uh, but it's always neat to hear different people's journeys and how they got to where they were going. Of course, in your future, do you have plans to write another book? I do. That's a good question. I'm actually writing it right now. So um, on the podcast, I always end my show and I say, until next time, make sure that you suit up, you show up, and you move the ball. And so this next book is all about how to show up in life the right way so that you can go after what it is that you want and how you can move the ball. Of course, what advice would you give future sports podcasts looking to get started? Say that one more time. What advice would you give future sports podcasts looking to get started? I would say first, who is your audience? Know your audience and think about what kind of content would that audience want to consume and then have guests on your show that align with that content. And then in terms of growing your audience, it's consistency, right? You know, you want to have content that you post on a regular basis because people are looking for that consistent drip of new episodes and then make sure you're showing up and posting on social media so people know of your podcast. What advice would you give future podcasts that are sports podcasts or even other podcasts that are looking to interview professional athletes? Social media is great because you can reach out to literally anybody, right? And so I would encourage you, if you want to try to connect with someone, have the courage to send that note. Will, will everybody that you respond to respond back or that you write to respond back? No, but you know, just it starts with you taking that first step and setting the note, right? And seeing, now don't pester them, right? If they don't respond, you can try following up a second time, but I wouldn't, you don't wanna be known as being that annoying person that's continuing to ping people. But I mean, you can tweet them, write them on Instagram, connect. I mean, there's so many ways you can connect with people today, which makes it so great. What advice would you give sports business owners looking to start their own sports empire like you did? Yeah, I mean, I, again, it goes back to knowing your audience, like who are your customers, right? So building your brand around your target customers, making sure what you are putting out there to your target audience is of value. It's always about driving value and, you know, connectability. I think it's so important that, and social media is great because it, it allows you to get to know people, like make sure people are getting to know you as an individual too, because that's what's going to make people want to support your business and your brand. It's not just about the products or the services that you offer. It's about getting to know you because people will buy from people they know, like, and trust. And then obviously provide good service too. That's important. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with finding your book app? Yeah, so the book is on Amazon in paperback and ebook form. And then it's also on Audible um, and iTunes. 
And then if you want to connect with me or find me on social media, if you just go on any uh, social platform and hashtag move the ball, you should see my stuff pop up. Of course, are you on any Apple podcasts, Spotify for your podcasts? Yes, move the balls on all of the major podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, all of them. Thank you again, Jen Garrett, for your interview and best of luck in your future with Move the Ball podcast and your books. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on today. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Jen Garrett, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.